long regarded as a fishing mecca. Visitors arrive here by boat, plane and chopper. But the first European visitor was Abel Tasman himself in the mid 1600s. He was followed by Matthew Flinders, the HMS Beagle of Charles Darwin fame, and explorer William Lansborough. With a pedigree like that, the local history of this little island is also bound to be colourful. Jason Simon head off to meet the island's custodian, Tex, here at the abandoned town of Carnarvon. There's some uh, old looking graves here, Tex. Yeah, this fellow was <clears throat> Gunner James Frost. He was a gunner on Her Majesty's Colonial Sloop Victoria, the first ship built for the Victorian Navy. It was in the Gulf looking for Burke and Wills. In 1861, they established a depot here in the island. Yeah. And Gunner Frost pulled his gun out from under the bed by the barrel to clean it and happened to be loaded with a double charge of powder and swan shot. Discharged, shooting him in the hip, and he died four days later from gangrene. Obviously, he wasn't a great gunner. <laughs> so he was a gunner and he shot himself. Yep. So these graves are here from the original... There used to be, like, a whole town on this. Yeah, um, he was... He predated the town, but there was a town here in 1866. The town yeah. was known as Carnarvon, yeah. and it was as a result of a plague, most likely malaria, hitting Burketown. When they got over here, they had no idea what caused the, the illness. They thought it was miasma, vapours off the swamps. It was May and June, uh, cool weather, no mosquitoes. Malaria. Malaria virus. ceased to be contagious. Yeah. Um, what happened to the town that was here? Well, probably fires, cyclones, termites got rid of it. It's There's, completely gone. It's just completely gone. There's nothing, nothing left. Nothing left. Nothing left. Uh, sometimes square nails, broken bottles, broken crockery. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's go and see what else we can find. Dex? So apparently, mate, there used to be a big old tree standing here with even names carved in it. What's with that? Well, some time ago it fell over in a cyclone and they took it down to the museum down in Brisbane. But the tree, the tree was where in 1802, Matthew Flinders carved his name in there as a reference tree, basically. And he was the guy that circumnavigated Australia and drew all the maps up. Yep. So that we could see today, the Australian map of today, he was the guy that basically he was the forefather of drawing the maps. And he came here to get water or he found water here or something, didn't he? Yeah, well, they, they come ashore apparently and they noticed in this soak here behind us, there was um, some, some shells and a bit of a digging from the local indigenous tribes. Yep. And of course they knew, they knew where to get water. So if you ever come to an island, mate, you're always looking for those, those hollows and stuff like that. And if you dig down, there's a good chance you'll get water. But even though the tree's not here now, you Replaced know. Replaced by a rock? Yeah, this rock replaced by a rock stays in the next cyclone, see? Well, there you go, mate. It's a, it's a, it's a, bit of history, a lot of history mate. in this, this little, little island, mate. Yeah. Not just all about fishing, you know. So uh, what else we got to see, mate? What else did Tex reckon we got around here? Well, Tex reckon there's a cave, a limestone cave. Yep. And it's got names in it, like people have scribed their names nice. in there. Nice. And it's it's very, very old. There's some old old stuff in there, mate. Some old scratchings. Let's go check it out. All right, let's go. Just check it out. Where are you going? It's this way. You sure it's not this way? No, this way. You sure? I don't know. Ask Tex. <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? I don't know. We finally catch up with Tex and he leads us on a bushwalk to the hidden cave. It's not a bad looking cave. Oh, initials and dates everywhere. So that's all you can see. You can start, you can make out a bit there. Yeah, if you, if you stay here long enough, you can make out 19... clearly what some of them are. 1918 there. Yeah. 1918. As you can see, there are names and initials um, from way back as far as uh, 1866 carved in the wall. Some of them are pretty hard to read, some of them are quite legible. There's one there, 19... Yeah, it looks like 1911. 1911 by the look of it. Yeah. Most of them um, date back to when the town of Carnarvon was on the island here. One of them over there is CHL, Caroline Hollingsworth Lansborough. Yeah. Caroline was the wife of William Lansborough explorer and administrator and the first man to walk across Australia from north to south. He came up here looking for Burke and Wills and tried to track backtrack and yeah, he went right, went right through to Melbourne not long after Burke and Wills demise. And there's more outside the cave. 
You can see the initials here, JF. And uh, Tex was telling me a story about that. It's Jane Fraser. And 10 years of age, she'd come across from England in the boat and she met a, an Irish guy. And they ended up on this island and they were married five years later. But you had to be 21 to be married without your parents' consent back in those days. And 21, sure enough, on the marriage certificate. The poor girl to age about 11 years in five. That's what it was like in those days. You did what you did to survive. It's quite a contrast. Our biggest worry out here is where we're going to find the fish. Mate, I think we got it pretty good compared to how they did it in the old days. <laughs>